Hi, so today we will discuss a scenario when a building structure is subjected to the earthquake load for which engineers need to perform the dynamic analysis capturing the P delta effect. Now any tall building which undergoes the lateral drift increases its P delta effect and if this effect is not considered in the analysis then this could lead to a very catastrophic result. So we will see how to deal with this in StatPro Connect Edition. Now, when a building structure like this is hit by the seismic action at the base along the horizontal direction, it undergoes to the lateral drift like this along with many internal deformation in the column. So these drift and the member deformation leads to large as well as the small delta respectively in the structure and thereby generating the second order response through the P-delta effect. Now the response due to the seismic action can be captured by the dynamic analysis or by the static seismic analysis. If it is a dynamic analysis, then you can use the time history or the response spectrum analysis. Now for the dynamic analysis, the eigen solution is required, but for the static seismic procedure, the eigen solution is not required. Now, as discussed earlier, the P-delta analysis, on the other hand, can be simulated by the iterative or the non-iterative method. Uh, the non-iterative method is also known as the geometric stiffness method. So for performing the static seismic analysis with any approach of P-delta analysis is just uh, simple and straightforward. It's just like a normal static analysis. However, for performing the P-delta iterative analysis in conjunction with the dynamic analysis, which involves the eigen solution, is a very complex task. So this is because the response spectrum analysis or the linear time history analysis is based on the linear condition. Uh, you can recall the concept of the model superposition method to understand it. Whereas the P-delta analysis is a nonlinear analysis. So in short, we are trying to perform the nonlinear analysis in conjunction with the linear analysis. So that's the challenge we have. However, this can be done by some advanced technique like uh, direct integration method for performing the nonlinear time history analysis. But instead, currently we have only the option to solve the dynamic equation by the modal superposition method which is a linear procedure. So what is the solution we are left with? Now we can use the P-delta KG method procedure to tackle this problem. Uh, you can understand this procedure better if you follow my earlier video on this. Now, if you see my earlier video, it was explained how P-delta KG method ultimately reaches the solution direct and straight which is similarly achieved by the iterative nonlinear path. So as in the P-delta geometric stiffness method, there is no involvement of iteration. We can directly get the geometric stiffness and get the final resultant stiffness to determine the eigenmodes and its corresponding natural frequencies. So let's see the procedure to do the same in STAT. So now instead we have to solve the eigen solution based on the modified stiffness due to the stress stiffening effect. So the stress stiffening effect is dependent on the axial load the member experiences. So basically it's a load dependent effect. Uh, we have discussed the same in depth in my earlier video. So in this case, in this model, the axial members are the columns. So what we will do here is identify all the loads that imparts the compression in the members. That is the stress stiffening effect. So these load cases are the gravity load cases, like this one and this one acting downward. So basically we are interested in identifying the P load involved in the P delta effect. So here in this model, we are taking two gravity load cases. Now the next step is going to be very interesting and important as well. So the next is the repeat load case that we have created. Repeat load case is a primary load case. 
and in this repeat load case we have called the two gravity load cases that are the load case one and the load case two uh, you can see here we have included these two gravity load cases under the repeat load so the next is the dynamic load case now here you can see we have defined the mass modeling in all the three degrees of freedom so these masks are nothing but the inertial load which will participate in the dynamic action so here we have also defined the spectrum definition okay now the reason for this repeat load case inclusion just before the dynamic load case is because stad reads the modified stiffness matrix that is k plus kg matrix or the geometric stiffness matrix based on the axial load determined from the load just above the dynamic load case that means this is the dynamic load case and it will read the load case this one for determining the k plus kg matrix and it will use the stiffness that is the modified stiffness for performing the eigen solution so your natural frequency and other responses after solving the eigen solution would be based on the modified stiffness that is not on the actual stiffness but on the variable or the resultant stiffness that is k plus kg matrix so by this process we have captured the effect of p that is the gravity load in calculating the dynamic response that is the eigen mode shape and the eigen frequency so please note this sequence and syntax because program has been written in such a way that it will read the load case just before the dynamic load case for calculating the dynamic response based on the modified stiffness so here in this model we are representing the load p by load case 1 and 2 which are included by this repeat load case and this has been defined just above the dynamic load case that is the load case number 4 now the next step is combination so here we are combining the static and the dynamic effect by taking the plus in one case for example here you can see number three is the static case that is the gravity case and number four is the dynamic case so we have taken the factor as the positive for both the cases and another combination case we have done where we have reversed the response of the dynamic case that means we have taken the negative sign for the dynamic load case and added it with the static case now the most important and the final step here is defining the p delta kg analysis command so let's see what we did here so eventually we have concluded all those instruction by defining this p delta kg analysis if you double click on this you can find this window you can also get this dialog box if you hit this analysis command box go to p delta analysis you can find here the option to include the use of the geometric stiffness that is the kg so this is here in the input file okay now let's see if this sequence of defining the static load case just before the dynamic load case is indeed affecting my dynamic response or not so let's do this test here so we are performing the analysis for on this case Now here you can see the first mode is this one and its natural frequency is 0 0.085 Hz 
so please note this value now we are going to make a slight change in the loading uh, we'll only do it for the gravity load P that means we are reducing the effect of this P loading acting at the tip of the structure uh, make it like 10 we have reduced it now please note that we haven't yet changed this mass modeling because we want to see that the natural frequency which is dependent on the formula like root over k over m right so we are not changing this mass but we are changing the stiffness through this uh, p values so our purpose is to see whether the change in the speed value indeed gets reflected in calculation of k plus kg matrix and if it is reflected then whether the eigen solution is done after taking the modified stiffness matrix or not so let's run the analysis once more so the previous frequency was somewhat like 0.085 now the frequency this time we got is around 0.209 Hz. That means in the second case we have reduced the load. That means my compressive load in the column has been reduced. So my resultant stiffness has increased because if you see this resultant matrix for the compressive load it is K minus Kg. For tension it is K plus Kg now this kg is get reduced because we have reduced the load so my net stiffness has increased now the formula for the frequency is root over k over m so my k value has increased so this natural frequency has also got increased from 0 0.085 to 0.209 so from here we can conclude that yes by defining the p load or the gravity load through this technique or this sequence indeed gets reflected in the calculation of the eigenvalues like eigenfrequency or eigenmode shapes based on the modified stiffness k plus kg matrix so hope that helps you to perform the P delta analysis in conjunction with the dynamic analysis like response spectrum analysis. Now, please note that this method is basically is not a rigorous method because we are not exactly traversing the nonlinear path by the iterative process. So you can see that this is more or less like approximate method, uh, which is very close to the actual solution. But there is a condition like this method works very well if it is a building like structure. So it has been also mentioned in the book on the dynamic analysis by Edward Wilson that for the building like structure we can use the P delta KG method in conjunction with the dynamic analysis.